This video content is strictly for educational purposes only. All demonstrations, techniques, and information provided in this video are meant to help you understand cybersecurity better. We strongly advise against using any of this information for illegal activities or unethical practices. Please like, subscribe, and comment. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back again. Uh, we're going to do some DNS spoofing. Now, we showed off in an earlier video uh, better cap and I think it was like a year ago that I made that video and it is still just blowing up So I figured we'd show off a new tool this time uh, We're gonna show off edder cap instead of a B with better cap We're gonna do E with edder cap now edder cap allows us to do our spoofing. It has a more of a graphical interface to it It's been updated um, and It's a really good tool. It's a it's a great tool. We are going to use Windows 7 with Windows 7 We can do a man in the middle attack uh, and from there, we can we can get all science of juicy information. All right. Well, the first thing we want to do is jump into our Windows box here, and I've got Windows Seven running. I'm going to do a start, and I'm just going to do a CMD, just like so. And in this, I'm going to do a ARP A. Now you can see here that I'm running 10.2.1. That's going to be my that's going to be my uh, uh, gateway. Right, so my router, and then 10.0.2.3. That is going to be my Kali box that's running on the background. So when we're done, the 2.13 and the 2.1, their MAC address, their physical address, should be exact if the ARP, spoof ARP spoofing attack is successful. So I'm going to push that off to the background. We don't need that right now. I'm going to open up our terminal, and the first thing I want to do is I actually want to go in and mess around with the DNS listings. So I'm going to do a uh, sudo v, and I'm going to do etc, edder cap, and then forward slash edder dot dns. And let me throw in my password there. It's saying that yada, yada, yada. I'm going to hit an E because I messed around with it before. Uh, and we're going to change. We're going to change this right here. So we can see here that we've got our uh, example.com. We can see dot a, so on and so forth. So we're going to add a website. We're just drk.com. Uh, and then we're going to do A for a record. So we're creating a new DNS record in here. Uh, and we need our IP address for our machine. And if I remember correctly, it's 10.0.2.13. So I'm going to grab that. We're going to put that in here. 10.0.2.13. We want to do a uh, asterisk that's a wildcard. Dot .drk.com. Again, a record 10.0.2.13. And then we want to do www drk.com just like that and this time we're going to do ptr uh ptr is a reverse dns uh, lookup so we want to make sure we're hitting it from that side and again 10.0.2.13 now we're done we've set up so anybody that goes to example.com is going to get reverted to this ip address uh which is host only which isn't going to work uh and then we've got drk.com over here uh which is 10.0.2.13 right so i'm going to hit that I'm going to escape and then colon WQ. That's going to save it up for us. Uh, from there, I want to, well, I want to create a homepage for this. So I'm going to do a CD and then forward slash var, forward slash www, forward slash HTML. Go in there. If I do an LS, I can see the index right here. And with that index.html, uh, I'm going to go through and actually change that. So I think I had it. If I just do a cat, I can actually see it. I can do an index.html. And it says I hacked you because I was messing around with another man in the middle box uh, on a reverse on a, on a different video. So we've got that one. So we're, we're just going to keep that. If I wanted to change it, I could do a sudo and then v and then index.html. And I could go through the same process. I could hit I. I could change it to whatever I want. Let's add, While we're in here, let's just add something. We're going to go another header. We'll just do a uh, you should not be on an open internet connection. There we go. And then we'll do the head again. And that'll do what I want it to do. Let me fix this real quick. There we go. And I'll just enter that. All right. And then I'm going to hit escape again and then colon WQ. And that'll save it for us. So we've got that. Next, I want to do port forwarding because we're inserting ourselves in the middle of a connection. We're telling the router that we're Windows 7. We're telling Windows 7 that we're the router. Uh, and that everything should go through us in order to get to them. So we're basically acting as kind of that man in the middle uh, when it comes to that. So that's that's what we want to go with. So I'm going to do a command over here. And to do that, we're going to do a sudo 
and then a I think it's so we're gonna do a sudo and then sys cta uh sys not system. I don't know why it's going system now. Wrong one. That's for Nessus. Uh sys ctl just like that. We're gonna do a tac w and then a net dot ipv4 and then dot ip underscore forward and then equals one just like that. I want to make sure that I got that correct. There we go. And it should say network dot ipv4 dot ip equals forwarding equals one. This is going to forward packets from uh, the Windows 7 machine on through us all the way over to the, the gateway if we don't have it in there. So it's going to provide internet access even though the system's going through us. All right, so this is almost set up. The last thing I need to do is a sudo and then service and then Apache 2 start. This is going to start the actual web service on our box. Uh, and it should go through it. Now, I want to test that. And to test it, I'm literally just going to open up Firefox. From Firefox, I'm going to do a 10.0.2.13. And there we go. I hacked you. You should not be in an open internet connection. All right. So we've got that up and going. Uh, and there we go. We've got it open. So I got to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of Vettercap, but it does the job, especially if you want to use something quick and simple. All right. So from here, I'm going to go the elliptical. I'm going to do a set net mask. And I just need to do that 10.0.2.0. That's going to be our network that we're scanning. And I'm going to click the button. And we can see we do not have permission to form this capture patch on the device. Operation not permitted. So I need to go into root. So I'm going to do sudo su. So I'm going to go back into it. I'm going to hit the net mask. And then 10.0.2.0. Not dot one, dot zero, Just like that. We're going to reopen it. And it's going to go through and it's going to start doing a unified sniffing right there. All right. From there, I want to check out hosts. So I can do on the top left, I'm currently sniffing. I can scan with a little magnifying glass and I can check for hosts. I'm going to do host list. We can see we identified 10.0.2.15, which I'm a little bit worried about. What is 10.0.2.15? Let's go into our terminal here. I'm going to open this up because I thought, I bet that's the Windows machine. For some reason, I was thought the window was on 10.13. But let's just do an in-map scan real quick. And we'll do a switch SN 10.0.2.0 with the slash 24 network. Uh, this should identify what I've got on this network, which I probably should have done at the beginning. So 2.13 is us, 1.5 is the Windows machine, and the gateway is at 2.1. So with that knowledge, I'm going to add, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to add that to target one. And it's been added. Now I want to find the, the actual uh, gateway, and it's not showing up. So I'm going to click that little button again. And it still didn't detect it. So that's fine. We're going to add it manually. So I'm going to do the editor cap. I'm going to do targets, current targets. We can see the target one right there. I'm going to add 10.0.2.1. I'm going to throw that in there. And then I've got both my targets. Now I want to do the ARP spoofing attack. So I'm going to hit that globe. And I'm going to do ARP poisoning. I'm going to make sure sniff remote connections is there. I'm going to press OK. And we can see here that it attacked group one. It only attacked the Windows box. It didn't attack the 2.1. It's not finding it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the scan button. Now it's showing two hosts. Now I've got it in there. So I'm going to add this to target two. There we go. And now I should be in there. So I'm just going to make sure. I'm going to do ARP spoofing again. And we can see that's been added. So it's already in there. I'm going to open up my Windows 7 right here, and I'm going to rerun that ARP-A command. Now, it didn't take effect. It didn't work, and that's fine. So we're going to stop the attack, and then we'll just restart it. There we go. Make sure our hosts are both there. I'm going to grab that one. I'm going to just verify. Add it to target 2. It's been added successfully. Add to target 1. It's been added. I'm going to go back to my man-in-the-middle attack and start the ARP spoofing attack again. And now we're ARP poisoning two victims. Both on that. Now let's go back to Windows 7. We're just going to press the up arrow and see if it took effect. And now it did. Now we can see on 2.13 that the ARP spoofing attack is actually going through 7.8 because 2.1 and 2.13 have the same MAC address. This is the Kali box on both ends. All right, so we see that. Now we need to figure out if the DNS spoofing is working, but we haven't set it up yet. So I'm going to go back into EdderCap. I'm going to hit that elliptical. I'm going to go to plugins. And I'm going to go to manage plugins. 
and then double click on DNS spoof. So DNS spoofing should, should be working now. I'm gonna go back into Windows 7 and I'm just gonna do a uh, DNS lookup or NS lookup, just like that. And I'm gonna do example.com because we provided, we had example.com, let's look it up. Now I wanna point out that there it is. It's pointing out that example.com belongs to 192.168.56.101. Now I don't have my Kali box set up for that, so it's never going to find it, but NS lookup is saying that that's the IP address. But what about drk.com? Let's go ahead and open up our browser and let's go to drk.com, just like that. And let's see if that doesn't put it in. And there you go. I've got, I hacked you. You should not be in an open internet connection. That is DNS spoofing. Now I could set it up in a variety of different ways. I could DNS spoof Google, or I could DNS spoof um, uh, Facebook or multiple other websites if I wanted to. And with this type of attack, it's going through and, and spoofing the DNS. I'm spoofing the ARP. And so this would be a way to where if I was an unethical person, and I was on that open Wi-Fi connection, or if I was on an open connection, I could do some pretty nasty things because I could copy a website if I wanted to. I could copy a website and make it look like anything that I wanted to look like. So if I wanted to, I could send you to a Google lookalike site, and when you typed in google.com, you would be transmitted over to that. Or let's be a little bit more dangerous, maybe a Bank of America website or a... Uh, a website for maybe something else, maybe your amazon.com website. Uh, and the worst part is if I understand web browsing at all, I can actually create a website that would go through and mimic Amazon's login page. And so it would, it would literally look just like the Amazon webpage. You would log in with your credentials. I would steal those credentials and then I could go through that process and uh, then order stuff through your username and password, right? So this is something that we need to be aware of as we're going through. This is why VPNs are so exceptional on open Wi-Fi networks. This is why we want to make sure that we're verifying that the not secure button isn't there, right? Amazon doesn't work on a not secure network. Uh, now, could I make in a secure network? Yeah, I could. I could, right? Uh, and so that's not 100% foolproof. But there's also DNSSEC. And so there's different things that we can utilize to help secure ourselves on these types of networks that you need to be aware of.